What's up everybody, this is Mark from Solar Games, and today we're going to continue answering the question, is Dominaria Remastered a good set? Uh, today's focus is going to be more around the value of the box, the price of the box long term, the reprint cards inside the set, whether those are good or not. My previous video, we talked about the draft experience, really the gameplay of Dominaria Remastered, and you can check out my previous video about that topic if you want to know more. Uh, but today we're going to talk about this. So first of all, you know, as you know, from 2020 to 2021, Wizard has been pushing this narrative of Commander first. Now, Commander, of course, is a very popular format and a lot of people are playing it. And that does mean that Wizard has a lot of pressure to go print more cards that are for Commander and reprints that are mo more focused for Commander. This is what you're seeing as well in Dominary Remastered. And the reality is, unfortunately, in my opinion, some of these reprints, while they are dire sorely needed for Commander, they do somewhat take away from the draft experience of the set because those cards are essentially not usable for a draft. And that does kind of suck long term. But again, this video is not about whether the draft is fun, but about the value. So let's dig into the reprints. So as you may or may not know, Dominary Remastered is a fully reprint set. So all the cards in here are reprints. There are no new cards. And uh, yeah, the reprints are good. I mean, let's look at the Mythics rare slots. Tons of good reprints, right? Force of Will, need I say more? Ton you know, Force of Will is one of those cards that has been reprinted many times already, but still it's not enough, right? The last reprint we saw was from uh, Double Masters, but part of it because Double Masters was a lower printed set, so it could be that there's just not enough boxes out there, again, still at Mythic rare, uh, rarity, Force Will continues to command a very high price. Now, the positive of this is uh, because of the reprint of Force of Will in this set, it has driven down the original Therese Nielsen Force of Will from Alliances down to about like 80 bucks, 85 for near mint, and even lower, like 70 ish, if you're looking for, you know, LP, HP, those kind of levels. Which, honestly, to my opinion, that artwork is really, really good. I would probably take this opportunity and pick up a couple of those old school Therese Nielsen Force Wills. However, even the new Force of Wills, I mean, this is historically low price. So your general Force of Wills usually average around $100. Now they're sitting around $75. So if you're needing them for your decks, it's actually a good time to pick it up. And if you can get them even cheaper than, let's say, $70, $60 something, I think it's probably a good time to buy. Look, the thing is, Force of Will is a card that everyone needs. People are always going to include more. Uh, Lyra Dombringer, good card. Angels, Tribal, you know, people will love that kind of stuff. So, yeah. No Mercy, right? You got Sneak Attack, Sylvan Library, Time Stretch, the Tudor Cycles. These are all great reprints that are part of this. Urza's Incubator, great for um, your specific, you know, tribal decks. And a lot of tribal focus in Dominary Remastered here. World Gorger Dragon here, uh, Test of Endurance, and Gauntlets of Power. More tribal type of cards. To be expected, this is exactly what happens in a reprint set, especially since Tribal is so popular in a Commander and Colors are popular in Commander. So a lot of those cards that are more focused on uh, Colors or specific Tribe are gonna be a lot more needed for a Commander reprint. Um, interestingly here, for example, Time Stretch, right? A very expensive card. Usually you really can't play that in limited or even constructed formats. But for a commander, a 10 cost card is actually not that expensive because the games are slower, they last longer. So, and there's a ton more ramp, right? So something like time stretch is actually really fun for commander. Now, one thing to note for the tutor cycle, um, Grim Tutor, being that it's kind of like the best one here, um, is also the one that's um, printed in Mythic Rare, while the other tutors are printed in you know Rare. So there's something to think about with that. and. Uh, for those that are still naive and think that Wizard actually doesn't care about second, secondary market, I mean, if that isn't an indicator, I don't know what else is, right? Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about rares. So good reprints and rares as well. Um, exploration, decent card for Commander. Well, I like it, okay? Savine's Reclamation. This card was previously only printed in Commander Precons. So of course, you know, Wizard's looking forward and say, hey, we need to make sure this card is actually available in uh, normal, I guess, box sets as well. Opposition. Been a long time since this card got a reprint. Mystic Remora, your poor man's uh, Rhystic Study. Probably people who are running Rhystic Studies would run both. So you have options. If they get rid of one, you still have a different one. Um, Gemstone Mine, right? 
Oversold Cemetery. I think this card, Oversold Cemetery, probably hasn't gotten a reprint for a long time. So apparently it's, you know, it's pretty expensive, but with this reprint, that should bring the card price down a lot. But again, I don't know about you. I'm one of those people who really love the old artwork. So a lot of these cards, I still prefer the old artwork over the new. Cryptic Gateway, again, more tribal stuff, more just good things that you can get free creatures out. Uh, not super playable in draft, but definitely super amazing for uh, commander cards, <clears throat> commander sets. Decimate, great destruction spell, and in commander with four players, um, you can definitely meet the bar of hitting all four targets. The problem with Decimate as a spell is that it does hit four things and four important things, but it also has to have four targets for the spell to be valid. Um, of course, with commander, you have a lot of players, a lot more enchantments or artifacts in play. This spell will fly fire, no problem. Helm of Awakening, um, okay, good card, need I say more, Wrath, you know, we always need uh, Wrath of God all the time, so these are some of the good reprints, of course I'm missing a ton of them, but these are the ones that just caught my eye looking through like, you know, the card list here, <clears throat> look, here's the thing, overall, reprints for the set is really, really good, right, that's going to keep the EV high for longer term, and so the EV should hold well, if the EV holds well, the box prices should hold as well. Um, the rare land cycle in this set is okay. It's it's decent and useful, maybe usable in Commander, but for other, you know, it's just not like the best uh, stuff, and it's not something that you can like easily fetch or uh, do things with. So, it's I think it's interesting for sure, right? I don't think the rare land cycles are that great. So if you're judging a set by that, then the lands are okay. Um, <clears throat> the top end mythic rares, of course, are very good. Like I've mentioned a couple of them. Oh, I totally forgot Urza, right? <laughs> Urza High Lord Arf Artificer is also in the uh, uh, reprint, you know. So there you go. Um, lots of good rares, right? But not super great rares. So it's still there. But this is good, right? So the reprint equity of this set is pretty good because there's quite a bit of cards that are in rare that are pretty good. Um, I have not checked all the prices yet. I think we probably need at least another week or two for all the prices to level for us to really have a good understanding of EV and have a real conversation about like, you know, uh, set value long term. OK, um, but looking at box prices, this is something that you really should think about, especially if you're looking at uh, investing in sealed uh, for long term. I think at some point right at, at release time, all the uh, Dominary remaster boxes were up in like the 250, 280s range, like at some point before release, about two weeks or so, or a month before. Um, especially when they started doing the spoiler season stuff, a lot of the cars look really great. People started really want to buy it. But around release, a little bit a week before release, it went down as low as like the 170s range on TCG player. Uh, I didn't check eBay at that time, but it, it could have been even lower there. But it kind of went back up to the 180s once the set released and partially probably because people started looking at the set and say, hey, this is kind of fun to play. And again, they saw the reprint value just like everyone else did. So that really pushed up the sales. Um, but it does look like about a week after, so now, um, <clears throat> that the numbers are softening again. So we're sitting around that 175 range for now. Looks like sales are flowing through, which is always good. So you do want to see that sales are going through. But I think part of the problem is that there's going to be ample supply. So that's the thing. Supply for the set is pretty high. There were definitely a couple stores that were listing thousands of boxes. And of course, I'm <clears throat> fairly sure they didn't buy a thousand boxes. They're just saying sell it. And of course, they can always ask the distributor for more which also means that distributors do have more. And just checking with a couple distributors um, a couple days ago, actually, uh, yeah, they definitely all have more Dominary Remaster booster boxes. So, um, I, you know, of course, first, I wouldn't expect any product that just released to be flushed out of distribution right away. But if you're looking for some sort of time spiral remaster situation to happen here, that's not going to happen because, again, the di distributors have more, more than enough. So... Another fallacy that a lot of people fall into with this set is that thinking the shooting star foils are worth a lot. While I understand, right, in a draft booster box, you're still looking at about one shooting star foil per box, which is pretty low percentage wise. The issue is that this set, unlike Time Spiral Remaster, does have a collector's booster. And every time that they introduce a collector's booster, now you have more ability and capability for getting all this like premium foil stuff. 
And so <clears throat> unlike Time Spiral Remastered, where you really have to go open many, many boxes to get like even a few Shooting Star foils, the Collector's Boosters have basically three chances of getting um, Shooting Star foils in the old retro frame. This is what a lot of people are chasing after, right? You actually have a guaranteed one retro Shooting Star foil land, but otherwise you have um, one slot for the common, uncommon borderless Shooting Star or borderless or retro frame in foil. So that's how you get the shooting star. There's also another slot within the collector's booster where you're gonna get either a borderless foil or a shooting star retro frame foil um, for the cards. So there's quite a bit of those probably flowing around. So if you're seeing some of the old framed cards uh, the, with the foil selling for a lot, I would probably hold back for now and then wait a little bit. I suspect with all the collector's booster packs being open, there will be more of those coming to market. Um, so I would hold off and just wait and see because I th I'm pretty sure those will fall much, much faster than Time Star Remastered. Do not, re do not have price memory for cards like that because again, Remember, Time Spiral Remastered released with no collector's booster. There was no alternative box. It was just the draft box. This one has a uh, collector's booster. So, yeah. <clears throat> Again, long term, right? So, where, where is Dominaria Remastered collector's booster going to hold long term? Um, I can't say for sure. One of the things that is helping its price right now is it does look like the supply is at least... Um, limited, so same same thing, right? I made a call to the distributors. It doesn't look like a lot of them have more uh, collector's boosters on hand, and if they do, they're not selling it. So that does tell me that maybe the supply is a little bit constrained there, but we have no clue because you know it could be the situation of like Blood Brothers War where Wizards have the boxes on hand, but they're just kind of trickling the supply to the distributors, so they're not selling it right away. And that might be a smart strategy to kind of hold it back. Or it could be like, you know, Commander Legends or uh, some other sets where they're just historically way less printed than your normal collector boosters. We can't really say for sure long term, but honestly, if you're just chasing after the retro frame stuff or something like that, I would probably just buy the singles and sit on those instead of sitting on the collector's boosters themselves. Because again, it's a lot more risk. Um, or I guess if you see the prices drastically drop, um, maybe it's okay to buy, but again, if prices start really tanking soon after because of all the money going to the next uh, standard set, you have to be actually more careful because that could signal that the supply is very high in the market. Yeah, <clears throat> so we don't know, right? But at this point, I've seen two points, right? Brothers War, Collector's Booster, and now with Dominaria, Collector's Boosters, where it does seem like the supply is being trickled. So it could mean that collective boosters for Dominaria long-term will retain a pretty decent price. I don't know, honestly, just because we don't have any data on print runs and Wizards changes it every set. So would you make a bet on this? I don't know, yeah. Um, I think Dominaria Remastered draft boosters will continue to fall in price for a little bit more because I think it's still a little bit high. Um, the inventory does look ample. Distributors are taking more orders. so. Right now, it just looks like the supply is still pretty high for those boxes. But, you know, maybe this becomes one of those one run and it's done type of products. And if that's so, then maybe the supply will shrink up and then it'll start picking up in price. We don't know for sure, but at least I would say if you like the set, if you enjoy the cards inside it, if you want to play with your friends and all the stuff, um, you know, around that 170 range is pretty good. Final scores. Um, Dominary Masters for singles and constructed is actually pretty good. I would say, you know, um, I would say a lot of the cards are just really meant for Commander, and that does show. So maybe that was the point all along to print more Commander cards. Yeah, reprints are decent. Tutor cycles are good. So you know how it is. Having Force of Wells and um, Needed Mythic Rares are always good as well. So this is, you know, one of those things. Mystic Remora, these cards that really should just be fairly um, cheap. Are, are actually becoming that way, right? Through this more reprints. I think if you're a player, these reprints are great and um, it may be this week or next week are good times to go buy the singles uh, for your decks, for those things. Don't go crazy. Don't try to invest any of the singles in this set. Um, just don't try to invest any modern cards is my recommendation. But, you know, obviously that's my recommendation. If you know way more information, go have fun, you know, do those things. I think it's probably not a good idea too risky, uh, especially with how much supply is on the market. Um, but you will see a lot of the cards will dip for this week, next week, as more and more 
boxes are open as more and more players finish drafting they're going to list their cards for sale stores are going to list more cards as they open so those prices are going to fall right but after that it's going to pick up back again so um do understand that number two remember um you can't judge the price of the set like you do for a normal standard set because the boxes are more expensive the stores are paying more so the mythic rares and such are going to be worth more as well just how it's going to be yeah but you know, if you're looking to hold on for um, singles, uh, sorry, for sealed boxes, I would say uh, hold off a little bit. Don't go crazy. I think 170 is probably okay as a, a price to kind of get in, but I wouldn't go crazy. Probably just get a couple boxes or cases for now and sit on that. Um, the thing is this, right? I don't trust Wizards long term yet. In fact, a lot of the other you know, indicators from the OGL changes, those kind of pieces, are still signaling that Wizard is not changing their course and they're still gonna be pushing heavily. And one of the ways to earn a lot more money is to just go print more product because again, their per unit cost is much lower once they finish designing, once they go to the printers uh, for each additional box. So each additional box they print will actually lower their total cost average and that will earn them more money. So, as wizard right from a wizard perspective design decision making why would they print 50k when they can print 100 to 200 to 300k they're going to still earn more money now long term it's going to erode value but short term it's definitely going to bring in more revenue even if they sell at a discount and that's the thing that you're going to have to be really careful with is that um if the set sells out and people stop drafting it because the, the draft is really not that amazing then you're gonna see the supply being dumped on Amazon. And as usual, you'll know. It's gonna go lower, lower, lower. Maybe it'll hit something like 100 or 80 bucks. I don't know if that's the right price to buy, but then that also means that singles are probably gonna be cheaper too, right? So you can probably pick up a force will then maybe for 40 bucks, I don't know. So this is where it gets really interesting. So we'll see about that. Um, that's all I gotta say on this topic. I think um, final review for the value of the cards inside the box, I would probably give it a solid A. So if you average the scores between the drafting, which is why I said C plus B minus, to an A for the reprints, I would probably give the set like overall score of maybe like a B plus A minus, that range. So I think overall it's pretty good. I think if you're playing the set, it's not as fun as some other sets you could be playing. And it does cost a lot more money per box. So it does feel a little bit weaker. I mean, maybe it personally, I would play Time Spiral Remastered instead, and maybe even uh, Modern Horizons or one of the two um again those are comparable products uh, at release about the same price right as this said now if you're just looking for singles um maybe it's okay to actually open the boxes for singles i'm i haven't done the ev specifically yet to see if you're even going to make it on top but with some of the mythic rares the price that they are um i think you're going to be pretty close or maybe even a little bit above but again for opening cars to sell singles, if you can't even be like, I would say 20, 30% above, you're probably gonna end up losing money, right? So be really careful with that whole thing. Um, you, you can't, like if you open $180 worth of card and you paid $180 for the box, you are actually probably net loss because after fees and everything, you're looking at like 150, 130, 130 to 150, depending on how many cars you sell, uh, those kind of things, and how many packages you have to ship not even including your time and your uh, you know, supply materials, driving to the post office, et cetera. So be careful with that stuff. Anyways, that's all I gotta say. Um, is Dominary good? I think it's okay. It's better than average, um, but I think there's a lot of design things that I didn't really like. Mixing too many sets into one really did not hit it home for me. So uh, yeah, looks like that's about it for me. And uh, you guys all have a wonderful day. I'll see you later, bye.